Hello. So I've been playing around with my camera settings and it might be a little bright, but I'm trying some things out to see if I can make the quality better. I can see myself on my computer monitor and I look kind of washed out, but it's not a bad look, so I'm gonna stick with it. So in January, I read two books. I wrote like probably 18,500 words. The second part of January was kind of tough because my son got sick and he is normally really healthy, but when he gets sick, he gets sick, like throws up on me kind of sick. So that was a struggle. So I was proud that I got to to do everything that I did. I also completed the Whole30 diet. If you're not familiar with it, you basically cut out dairy, gluten, sugar, a bunch of things that your body might be sensitive to. So you cut it all out for 30 days and then you gradually introduce them back into your diet to see how it affects you. So that was really interesting. I lost 10 pounds, so that was good. So overall, a pretty accomplished month. But I'm here today to talk about the two books that I read and what I thought of them. So everything I'm about to say is of course my opinion. You might disagree and that's fine. This is just how I felt about each book. The first book I read was Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. Something I typically really enjoy about John Green's books are his male lead characters. I like to read from a male perspective because it's something you don't get a lot of and why lit. And I feel like he portrays a type of male that we don't get to see a lot. His male protagonists are always sensitive and really thoughtful and just as emotionally distraught as female protagonists. And I think that's really needed in the YA community. Obviously we don't get that in this book. We have a female protagonist. I just feel like, personally, I found it hard to picture Aza. Even near the end of the book, I was like, I don't even really know what she looks like. Like, I know she's supposed to be that pretty girl that doesn't know she's pretty. The type of girl who gets male attention, but she doesn't want it. Like, I get that. I just really couldn't put a face to her character. One of the things in the book that I did enjoy is John Green's description of anxiety and panic attacks and spiraling. I, as someone who can very much relate to that, I felt like he captured that really well, the way your mind starts from very logical and rational and grows to be very irrational and very illogical and emotional and it's kind of hard to jump out of. So I thought he did a good job with that. I also enjoyed obviously the philosophical aspects of the book. He always promotes a lot of deep thought in his writing and has a lot of references to not only like pop culture but also history and literature and philosophy and I really appreciate that. The romantic relationship in the book was not my favorite. It wasn't relatable. Um, the dialogue was definitely a little out there but I'm used to that with John Green's books so I expected that. Overall I liked the second half of the book better than the first half. The first half took me a while to read and the second half I read pretty quickly. I would have loved to read this book from a male protagonist. And again, this is just my opinion. I love reading male protagonists from John Green, so I would have loved to see that. It's not my favorite John Green book. I think my favorite John Green book has always been Looking for Alaska. I think that was the first one I read and it just struck a really personal note with me. And so that's still my favorite. The second book that I read was The Cruel Prince by Holly Black, which actually was released this year. So this is the second book that I've read by Holly Black. The first was The Coldest Girl in Cold Town. And what I really liked about both books is how she captured being a normal person who's transported into this scary yet fascinating and beautiful world. Sometimes in fantasy it can take a while to feel like you're in the world because you're just thrown into it. But I like how Holly Black kind of transitions us from the real world to this fantasy world. In the book, something that I liked was the dialogue. I thought that it was a good mix of their old world and their new world. You could tell that the main character Jude and her sisters were raised for the first part of their life in the mortal world, but they were still affected by the fairy world. And so their speech is very much a mix of those two things, which 
I feel like it's kind of hard to do, so I think she pulled it off. I also like the mysteries and the twists in the book. Usually I'm pretty good at figuring out twists before they happen, as I'm sure a lot of you can relate to, and I feel like there were things I didn't see coming, which is always exciting because twists are really awesome and it's exciting to get surprised, so I enjoyed that. I also thought that Holly Black did a good job of describing the different ways you might feel if you were transported into this world. We have three sisters and they all have different reactions to being in this fairy world. You have Jude who admires the world and everything it has to offer but is still very suspicious of it and very aware of her role as a mortal in it. You have her sister, her twin sister, who wants really really badly to fit into this world and be a part of it. And then you have their older sister who does not want anything to do with it at all. I thought that was kind of smart to show those three different reactions to the world. Really. I think I would be like Jude also. I think I would be really fascinated by it and adapt somewhat, but I would still know my place and feel like an outsider. So that was a good perspective to read from for me. The only thing I didn't really like was how dragged out the ending was. With Turtles All the Way Down, I sped through the last half. With The Cruel Prince, I sped through the first half, or the maybe the first three quarters, and then once the climax happened, I took forever to finish it. Because I feel like a lot happened after that point that could have been condensed. Even though there was still a lot of action after the climax, I just slowed down a lot reading it. And I think it's because when you're reading a book, you expect for the climax to happen, and then everything to kind of slow down and work its way into the resolution. And that didn't happen, so it took me a while to finish, and I thought that it could have been condensed a little bit, but I still, I really did enjoy it. I enjoyed the characters. I enjoyed that the romantic relationship in it wasn't, like, at the forefront, which is cool, because to Jude, that wasn't what was important, and, you know, it's not important to everyone. You don't have to have it as a central storyline in every novel, so I enjoyed seeing that. So for February, I am planning on reading two books as well. That's going to be my goal. I am planning to also try to write 20,000 words. It is a shorter month, and it is already the seventh, but I'm going to try to make it happen. I did finish book one of the book that I'm working on, so I'm really excited to get into the next part. I just have to plan some things out first, and that's what's been holding me back but I'm excited to jump into it. Let me know what you thought of these two books if you have read them. Let me know if you agree or disagree with anything that I said. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you next time.